Hi everybody. I am a little bit uneasy right now. Uh, the boss is staring at me intently. I don't know if it's an angry stare or if it's a supervisory stare or if she's just annoyed at my existence stare. At this point, it could be anything, although she is currently adjusting to lie down. I'm hoping that's going to be uh, what happens for the rest of this video, but she's making me very uneasy. So, you know what? Let's just get into it. You've got questions. I've got answers. It's time for a little bit of Q&A. So I don't know if you've ever had any disasters while traveling, but I can't think of any bigger disaster than losing your passport while traveling abroad. It's just a hassle. It's not the end of the world. It's just a huge hassle. Now, if you don't know this already, you should keep your passport with you at all times. That is your identification. If you are asked for your ID when you are boarding a train or you're going into a museum, they don't care about your driver's license. They want to see your passport. So that should be the identification that you carry with you at all times. Now, there are some things to do before you even go on your trip to help protect you in the event your passport goes missing. So let's start with that. Number one, make sure you make copies of your passport and keep them in different places. Put one in your suitcase, put one in your purse, put one in your carry-on. And when I travel with friends, I put a copy of my passport into their suitcase. It's really important to have a copy of your passport. Now, obviously you will not carry all the copies with you. Make sure you put them in the safe of your hotel room or try to hide them best you can so that no one else can get their hands on them in the event that something goes wrong. Now, number two, and this one's gonna be really unpopular, Enroll yourself in the Smart Travel Enrollment Program. That is the U.S. State Department's website. And basically, it's going to connect you with the closest U.S. Embassy or consulate. But essentially, you're letting the government know where you're going when you leave the country. I know a lot of people have a problem with that. However, it's kind of important for the government to know where you are in the event of an emergency. They also will push out updates in the event that there is an emergency. Uh, and suddenly people stop hearing from you and they can't find you they can contact the embassy and help to locate you. So I personally would do it. They're basically registering you with the closest consulate and embassy that you're gonna be near so that they know you're there in case you need something from them. But you know, to each his own. If you're not gonna do that, then definitely at least know where your closest consulate or embassy is because they're the people who are gonna to have to fix this for you. And if you don't know where they're at, you're not gonna know where to go to get help. So just look it up, it's very easy. That's what you should do before you travel. Now let's talk about what happens if it actually gets lost or stolen while you're traveling. Truly, these are the same steps that are you're going to follow if they get lost or stolen in the United States. It's just done a little bit differently because obviously there's not a lot of US passport offices when you're traveling abroad. In fact, the only place is the embassy or the consulate. So I have actually gone through this process before. So I am, well, I'm not an expert, but I've done it. So let's get into it. First of all, if it's been stolen, so meaning you were robbed or someone uh, ransacked your hotel room or something like that, definitely consider filing a police report. It is not necessary, but it's highly recommended. That way the embassy can contact the local police department and they can see if they can track down the people who have your passport. Or if your passport just turns up or somebody tries to use it, the police will know that that's yours and that you were the victim of a crime. But if you've just lost it or you've misplaced it and no crime has been committed, you can just go to your consulate or your embassy and ask for the consular section. They're the ones who are going to get your passport reissued. Now, you will need to have a passport photo taken. If you don't know where to get that done and you need help finding a location, the consular section will tell you where to go get it at. Um, and then you can, of course, just return to finish the process. You're going to need evidence of your United States citizenship. This is where the copy of your passport comes in extremely handy because they will accept that as evidence of your United States citizenship. 
If you don't have a copy of it, guess what? You're going to have to get your hands on a copy of your birth certificate with the actual seal. That's going to be really hard to do. Someone's going to have to send it to you. So, yeah, that copy of your passport is going to make the difference between this being a couple days of a bump in the road to this being an absolute nightmare and having to stay there for long periods of time. Also, way more expensive. You're going to need to show your travel itinerary because you're going to need this expedited, right? You're not traveling for eight weeks, which is about what it normally takes to get a passport. So yeah, you're going to want to show them your travel itinerary that says, hey, I'm leaving in, I'm supposed to be leaving in two days. Can you help me out? They will help expedite it that way because that's what you would need to do if you were in the United States and needed an expedited one as well. You'll need that form DS-11. I talked about that a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's the actual passport application. They will have them there for you to fill out. You don't have to worry about doing that ahead of time. And you will also need to fill out a DS-64. That is the lost and stolen passport form. Again, you can fill that out there. You will have to pay to have your passport reissued. Now, sometimes they will waive that depending upon the circumstance. If you were robbed or if you have issues with sufficient funds, they may be able to help you out. But yes, you are essentially replacing your passport like you would be renewing it or getting a new one. Basically, you're going through all the exact same steps that you go through to get a passport to begin with. It's just you're getting it at an embassy or a consulate and you'd fill out some extra paperwork because you already have an active passport that they don't have access to. Now, why do you have to fill out that form? Because they are going to deactivate that passport. You are getting a brand new passport, which means if you find the other one, as I did, you can't travel on that. So let's say you think you've lost your passport. You can't remember where it's at. You can't find it. You go to the consulate. You fill out all the paperwork. You send it everything in. You go back to your hotel room and well, there it is. You can't travel on it now. You've reported it stolen. You can tell them that you still have it, but the process has begun. Um, you can try to contact them and say, whoa, 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 I found it. Can we stop this process? But more than likely, it's already started the expedited process. So yeah, your passport is now going to be null and void. If you try to travel on that passport, you will get caught at border control. Like, yeah, and you're going to run into some pretty significant problems. Uh, at a minimum, <laughs> you won't be able to enter the country that you are going to. Um, but yeah, depending upon if you fill out a form saying that you were robbed or something like that, it could be even worse. So if you find your passport, you can't use it. You have to wait for your new one to come. That passport will be like you've renewed it. It will be good for another 10 years. Yeah, it's a, it's a replacement for your passport. Something else to keep in mind, like I said, you can't travel on your old passport. You're going to have to stay put because that passport is going to come to the consulate. So yeah, if you're like on a guided tour through Europe, you're going to have to stay in that location to collect your new passport. And you're not going to be able to go to any other countries anyway. Um, I mean, the European Union's a little bit different in that they don't do border control each country. However, on occasion, they will ask for your identification. And if you're flying, they're most certainly going to ask for your identification. So yeah, it's going to put a monkey wrench in your plans. Kind of helpful when you have travel insurance for that purpose. But I won't get into my travel insurance lecture yet again. So I hope that answered any questions you may have. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions that you would like to ask me, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. And you can either comment below or you can go to any of my socials. I am Tipsy Travel Gal on all the main social media sites. Or you can go to my website, tipsytravelgal.com. If you look at the menu bar all the way at the top, there is a contact me link and you can go there and send me an email. Thank you so very much for watching and until the next time, bye.